Good morning, everyone, or good day, wherever you are. This is June 3rd, 8 a.m. No, Pacific it's Time. July 3rd. July 3rd. I'm not even sure what month it is. <laughs> hey, I'm Rick Zanotti, and right next to me is Gina Shrek. Hello, good morning, good day. Uh, and, you know, good evening, good night for Jeff, good middle of the night. And hopefully yeah. not good riddance. July 3rd here. It's already July 4th for our friends on the other side of the world. That's right. And um, we will be celebrating the Independence Day here in the States. Um, are you doing anything exciting for the 4th? No, just going to a barbecue and that's about it. You know, all fireworks here in Colorado, because of all the fires that are still going on, all fireworks have been banned, like everywhere. So yeah. you either have to watch them on TV or up, we have a deck that's way up high above our house that usually we can go up there and watch really great fireworks. So we keep saying we'll go up there and watch the illegal fireworks that we know people will have. But, um, but yeah, they've all been banned. And they have big signs everywhere warning, fee, you know, all the fines that you're going to pay if they catch. Right, right. Not, so, to men not to mention jail time. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. My father-in-law's coming in from Kansas tomorrow. We're picking him up. And then um, the girls, Taylor gets home from Africa on the 5th. And then Bailey gets home from Montana on the 5th. So, you know, we have, we, we've been like empty nesters for a week. Yeah, and, vacation. Uh, yeah, vacation, which is why we went to Vegas. We decided, you know what, let's do a quick four-day trip to Vegas. We had a bunch of points. Let's go. And um, But, you know, my shiner did put a little damper on that. Um, and I, you know, some of the things I want to talk about today about video, I've been just itching to use this new iMac to create some cool videos and do stuff. But I'm having to wait until my... Um, shiner goes away. No <laughs> amount of makeup has been able to cover this. Oh, uh, really? You can't even cover it, even with makeup? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, when I put makeup on it and concealer over it and all the stuff and powder, it looks worse because it looks like I have a black eye I'm trying to hide. Right. You're a little um, swollen underneath, but it's not too bad. It's it's definitely yeah. healing. It's definitely healing. You wiped I, yourself more on the cheek than the eye, didn't you? Yeah. It, oh, right on the cheekbone. Yeah, that's where, that's, where, that's where it looks a little darker. I touch the cheekbone. So for those of you who didn't know, I lifted a table, don't try this at home, and from my patio to try and break into my house because I got locked out. And when I lifted the table, it had a glass top on it that's not secured, and the glass top came off and, and hit me in the eye. So um, yeah, you know, my superhero cape was in the dry cleaner, so I wasn't <laughs> able to uh, fulfill my duty. But... Well, um, we've got a whole mess of stuff today. And by the way, I wanted to start <laughs> out telling everybody that we have moved the videos. They're no longer on Vimeo. Vimeo was great. We really enjoyed it. However, we are now on YouTube. We're a YouTube partner, um, and you can find all of the videos. We uploaded almost every show. We've got a couple that we have to re-upload. Uh, but they're all on YouTube.com slash RelateCasts, R-E-L-A-T-E-C-A-S-T-S. And everything is there. Not only do we have awesome. the Shrek Tech Show, we've got eLearn Chat there, our favorites, and all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's kind of all aggregated in one place. You don't have to go looking around for all the different channels and everything else. So I and, went to the channel on YouTube, and then I, you just do a search for the show that you want. Is that the way? You can do it that way. Or no, or you can go to the playlist and see all the shows you want. Oh, that's um, true. So you have them in playlists. They're okay. in playlists, and, and you can just find them under videos, and you'll see them. But one thing I've noticed is that when you go to YouTube, the search on your channel for anything is instant. Uh, right. So if you type in any of the guests we've had or any of the shows, it's instant, uh, which cool. is nice. So you can it's it'll be much easier with the tagging that we put in to find just about almost anything we've done. And so we encourage you to go take a look and subscribe because this one, uh, Vimeo allows you to subscribe. We had very few subscribers on Vimeo, though we had over 20,000 views a month on the whole yeah, so, that is weird. So hopefully on YouTube, that'll be a little bit better and more people will subscribe because people are used to subscribing on YouTube. Right. So anyway, yeah, we look forward to seeing you there on YouTube. YouTube.com slash RelateCasts. Have a and, good one. And for those of you who are listening live right now on Tuesday morning, um, you can actually log in to the chat room. I know a lot of people listen and they, they never log in, um, but you can log in and join in the, ch the live chat. And, you know, a lot of times we'll ask questions of you because we don't know it all. And the brilliance in the chat room is always, um, always comes through. So, um, that's yeah. true. I know. And we, Jeff, you're right. Jeff in the chat room says we need to try Google Hangout. And I, I did a Google Hangout a couple weeks ago and it was great. 
loved it and we did the Google Hangout on air where it automatically uploaded to YouTube and I just think this is a really cool feature for businesses to find creative ways to gather your customers or your team members and um, you know you just click a button now this week YouTube let's see is it YouTube no it's Google Plus that added the feature called events you can schedule see in a couple weeks ago the way it worked if we wanted to do a Google Hangout on Tuesday morning for our show, we could not send people a link ahead of time. We'd have to say log into Google Plus and look for the show when you get there. Just look for all shows that are live right now, which is right. kind of hard. So now, just this past week, Google Plus came out with this uh, feature called Events. You can actually schedule a Google Hangout, send people a link to invite them to the Hangout. Now it makes sense. Um, now I feel like I could see using this for, you know, coaching sessions. I could see using it for team meetings where you send people the link and they're automatically brought to the Google Hangout. So that's cool. That that is cool. And yeah. one of the things we're going to try, we haven't tried this yet, but uh, YouTube also has a streaming beta. So we may be able to actually stream the show live on YouTube versus using Justin. A lot of people have had problems with Justin.tv. So we'll see if, if we can get on the YouTube beta. And from what, I, what I've read, it's pretty good. It works pretty well, and they have pretty much unlimited bandwidth. So yeah. um, it may be a better or easier bet. So we'll, we'll see. Um, so that's, that'll be exciting. So, so we'll try um, that one too. Yeah, that'll be that'll be good. I mean, it's always fun to experiment with these platforms and check out how they work, what they, you know, it is. what features hey, they bring. And by the way, uh, Colleen, who you probably all know from the eLearn chat show, Colleen Sunley, right. she sent me some links yesterday to a couple of products. One is called Reflection, and the other one is called Air Server. And what oh, those tools Air allow Server. you to do, and now that you have your new iMac, you can do demos right on your iMac, and we can see them here. It allows you to mirror your iPad screen right on your Mac or PC. Okay, so that's what you were talking about yesterday. Yes, you yeah. I, I haven't played with it yet. I didn't have time yesterday, but, but I will in the next several days. And next week, we'll have it up and running. You can have it. I'll have it. And we can actually do demos of apps and Absolutely. whatever else that's on the iPad right on the show so you guys can see what we're talking about. Not wow, that it's not awesome. cute watching us put our iMacs up, but this will be a lot more readable for all of yeah. us. That'll be exciting. Well, some other news this week, Google Plus, obviously, that was the news um, that, that came out for Google Plus with the events. Play with that one. Um, but LinkedIn had a couple things this week that made the news, made the tech news, and one of them was pretty interesting, that they are no longer auto-feeding tweets. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if it was just a bandwidth issue. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think it's interesting. I think they. I read something that said it was a strategic move that they felt it was getting too cluttered um, with everybody auto tweeting and spamming and stuff in. Um, and it was, you know, that's prob to, that's you know? probably the truth because there's so much spam on Twitter. Yeah. And and I'm noticing it it's on on LinkedIn different. too. And, and anytime you go into LinkedIn, you see all the stream going by, and you just go, okay. Yeah, now you don't have to pay attention to it, but it is there, right. and it consumes their bandwidth, so they probably figured it's not worth it. Right. Now, yeah. they're and not auto-tweeting, but are they are they linked at all to, to TweetDeck or actually yeah, to you can Twitter? Still, like, you can still um, do it from a third-party app like Hootsuite, TweetDeck. You can still okay. send a tweet there. But but in the past, you could go into LinkedIn and click the little Twitter box that said automatically mm. pull <laughs> okay. your tweets in, and they're, they're no longer doing that. I, I don't know that that's going to make that big of a difference because I think people use third-party apps when they're blasting everywhere it sounds like they'll work around it they'll work around it the the key is i mean people need to realize you you can't send the same content to all your platforms and we've talked about this it's different audiences on each platform so right. i think it's a smart move in the right direction for linkedin because i think linkedin still is missing the fun factor like linkedin is just this business tool which has great potential for business contacts and leads it's just missing the fun factor so then when you add in Twitter to a business tool that you're not intending to use for um, that type of uh, news source in, in uh, it's just a little bit different I think it turns more people off it, it, I think it does I think LinkedIn is more of a professional tool and you don't really want all the fun stuff on right. that one there's got to be at least one place where semi-serious 
maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> where, yeah, where serious people can feel comfortable. That's right. Um, and, and this week, now, now LinkedIn has always had the app you could add for YouTube. So you could have your YouTube channel added to your LinkedIn profile. So if you have videos, um, you know, whether they're training videos, marketing videos, a welcome video, you could pull your YouTube channel into LinkedIn using the app. And, and on LinkedIn, I think it's 12. You can only have a certain number of apps added to your LinkedIn profile. And I, I believe the number's 12. Um, let me know in the chat room if I'm wrong. <laughs> good, good morning to everybody who's logged in. Um, and supposedly you can only have one YouTube channel, I believe. You can't have more than one, correct? Profile? Uh, yes. Oh yeah. It's, because if you have multiple, like, if you have multiple Google or Gmail accounts, you could have multiple channels, and some people do. But yeah. you can only have one, I think, that shows up on um, LinkedIn. So you have to be careful which one you put on. Right. Which actually, I got that question this week. Is I have two YouTube channels that I created, how do I merge them? Because I created one long time ago and then created another one for their business and they, you know, they're know, they trying to now get rid of one. There, there is no way to merge them. I, I mean, there's just no way, there's no workaround. The, right. the only workaround is manually taking videos from account one and uploading them, re-uploading them to account two, which really that means you have to still have them somewhere um, on your hard drive or somewhere to pull them and re-upload them to another channel. But um, because it's linked to your Google, you know, your Gmail account, there's no way to merge them. But on LinkedIn, yeah, when you add, same thing on Google+, Plus, it's going to pull the YouTube, which this we ran into this last week. When you're doing a Hangout, uh, Google Hangout on air, it's automatically, while you're, while you're doing the live show, it's automatically recording it to YouTube. Hmm. So as soon as you're done, it's up. It's it's on YouTube. Now you can go in and you can edit. You can trim the the ending or the beginning. You can trim and do some minor edits in YouTube using their their edit features. However, what happened last week is we discovered um, Sharice, who we were, and she's going to be on our show in a few weeks. Sharice had a YouTube account for personal use, which was her Gmail account, which was where she had her Google Plus account, and then she had a uh, a YouTube channel for her business. She wanted the video, the YouTube Hangout, to go to her business YouTube. It wouldn't because her Google Plus account was set up through her personal mm. Gmail. So you know that it is one of those things that's really hard for people getting into the game now. After we messed around with them for a few years, and now we're learning how to use them, it's like it's hard to correct a lot of that. But um, YouTube is one of those tough ones. You need to make sure you have the right. YouTube account linked to all these apps or you're pulling in videos you may not want people to see on your well yeah I remember we had a guy who came for an interview one time and you know he if he had a Google account now his Gmail was stud puppy I, I kid you not it was stud puppy so imagine if he had the stud puppy channel and all of a sudden that winds up on his LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Profile. that just that just may not attract the kind of people so you funny. watch. Yeah. Hello, I'm you know, Stud Puppy, and I'm a programmer. Uh huh. You're right. <laughs> yeah. The the Shreklet, who's 16, when she very first got email, she was probably 10. I created maybe even younger. I created an email account for the girls, and I just used their name. You know, Bailey Shrek at Gmail dot com. Um, and it was funny because last year she said, "Mom, thank you so much for making a normal email address for me." She says, "All my friends have email address." Bubble puppy seven <laughs> at hotmail dot com and star soccer um, sweetie. At, she says, and now when they send the emails out, she goes, you just look at that and go, okay, it's time to grow up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. Um, no, now Facebook, <laughs> Facebook did something again with email. Oh my gosh! Now what did they pull? Okay, this is a major. I, I'm hearing people a mass ex is coming for Facebook again. There's always some, you know, mass exodus, but everyone has a Facebook email account. If you have a Facebook account, you have a Facebook email. You may not know that, but if you have a Facebook profile, somebody could send an email that does not have Facebook. Somebody could send an email that just says gina.shrek at facebook.com and it goes to my message area on my Facebook. So when I log in, I see I have messages. 
that email could be dropped in there, which is a cool feature. If I'm connected with people, like Leva for a long time, I don't know if, I think Leva, you finally got an email uh, or a Facebook account, but for a long time, Leva didn't have a Facebook account, but she could send an email to rick.zanotti at facebook.com, and it would go to your Facebook messages. The problem is, if you don't know that, and if she doesn't really know where it's going, um, you may not ever look in your Facebook messages. Right. No, you had an email. So, so okay. So everyone has an email. What Facebook did last week was they made their email the default email in your contact area. Hmm. Now they're saying it was some glitch in the software, which I don't believe. I, I think they really wanted a greater adoption of Facebook Mail, and they're trying to get everybody to understand how to use it or that you have it. Um, and so they just figured, do it and apologize later. But they made it the default. All that really did was, if somebody went to your contact information, they would see your email as the Facebook.com instead of your secondary email, which is your business email. But there was another piece to this, and it was if you had connected your contacts with Facebook, it would pull all of their contacts in and basically sending messages out to people um, to get people to subscribe or sign up for Facebook and their email. So it, it was a big hubbub. And what I kept telling people is just go into your settings. Mine, I saw both, my Facebook and my Synapse. Mine never switched. The default never switched. And I don't know if it's because I had set it up. I don't know. Mine never was um, changed from the default. But... Everyone saying they went in and their Facebook email was default and their other email was not. So, you know, I tell people, just go and look. And you're able to select, edit, and then say, change the default one to this one, save, and it's done. Interesting. Now, you know, it's funny. I, I talk to a lot of people, and I don't know anybody who actually likes Facebook. They're all on it, but they all hate it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just wondering. Uh, there's, wh there's so many people there. And that's how we communicate with friends, family, coworkers. Yeah. Now, I mean, it, it has become the the main source for a lot of people of communication. I mean, I told you my daughter, who's twenty one, she delete, she deactivated her account two or three times because hmm. she hmm. hates like all these kind of stuff. And then she said, "I feel like I'm out of the loop on everything." Everyone assumes, "Oh, well, everybody has, especially if you're a college student, everybody right. thinks you have Facebook." So. I think people feel like they have to be there, but they have this love hate. Now, are you finding more and more people getting on Google Plus? No. No. I still think people, it's like any social site. You have to be there long enough. You know, it's the whole thing of return on investment. You have to invest before you see the return. And I don't think people have invested in Google Plus enough. I think people throw stuff out there, and I'm guilty of that. I'll throw stuff out there because I know it's ser searchable. I know that it's, you know, findable, so I'll put content, a blog post I write, I'll, I'll put it up there because I know it's, it'll help it get that reach. Um, but you have to invest in the relationships there, I think, to get the return. Um, well, I know a lot, I a lot know. of people are, are concerned about Facebook privacy. Um, they are very cozy with the government. There's a lot of information that people say, hey, this shouldn't be going to anyone. And I, I think that's another issue with Facebook that I, I think on a lot of fronts, Facebook is just ticking people off. So it's going to be interesting. Give it another year or two and see what really happens. Not to mention all the people who jumped in and lost a lot of money on Facebook when they went for the IPO. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's that not, happens. That it's happens. Not, any, any tech stock, you, you're going to risk it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I'm looking in the chat room and everybody's saying, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you go to Facebook to catch up with people. You go to... Facebook um, to stay in touch with your family and friends. You don't do a lot of business um, there, but you you are connected there. So there's this again, this love hate. I I do like Google Plus. I, I love the look of it. I love the fact that right. it's Google. I love the fact that, um, but it's still I have not invested, and I always say I'm guilty of not getting the return there because I haven't invested yet. And, and that's the problem. There's so many, I mean, there aren't so that many fun. social networks, but there are some major ones, and which one do you really spend all your time in? If you want to invest more time, obviously, the ones you enjoy, like Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, she had to get that in. <laughs> I just had to throw that one out. But I do have to go back to when we're talking about LinkedIn uh, video. Here's a cool feature that most people don't think of for their LinkedIn profile. And I think that's a really helpful marketing um, tip for it. For folks who have their own business or folks who are trying to really establish themselves as a thought leader, an expert in your industry. Um, so SlideShare, most people know SlideShare. Um, in the professional side of things, you can upload presentations there, your, your PowerPoint presentations or keynote presentations. And uh, we typically have a contact slide at the end of it, to how to get a hold of us because people will share your or they can view your presentations depending on your settings. So um, SlideShare is an app, one of the 12, that I always say you really need to have on your LinkedIn profile. Put SlideShare app on your LinkedIn profile so that people can see some of the pres Even if you don't give presentations, create a presentation about your area of your body of knowledge and put that on SlideShare. It's free. Create the account. Pull that into LinkedIn. Now here's the key. This is what I'm going to work on as soon as my black eye is gone. Um, Create a welcome video and maybe just kind of telling people about you or your business, um, something that you want to let people know right when they come to your LinkedIn profile. Now you embed that video into your presentation just like you would if you wanted to, um, hmm. you know, you add media to your slides, your slide deck. So you're going to add that video to slide number one. So that when, and you're going to set the settings so that it automatically plays when people click on the presentation. So now you add that piece and move that app into a position on your LinkedIn profile so that if people want to hear a message from you, um, it's a good way to add a little, to stand out and be a little different. Most LinkedIn profiles are pretty much the same. It's pretty oatmeal, bland. So, um, so that also sounds like a workaround for the YouTube issue of only having one channel. Right. Um, and you may not, you, you know, you, you could do both. But I think LinkedIn, again, gives that more professional edge that you can then have a few slides that might show your services or your products, you might whatever you want to showcase on your LinkedIn profile. But the first slide being a message from you, um, and that way on your LinkedIn profile, that video um, will play. And that's that's, a, a, that's a great idea. And that's from SlideShare? It's, it's the combo. It's slideshare.net. Mm-hmm. And you go to slideshare.net, create your account, upload your presentation, and then add that app in LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you can add all kinds of apps. Um, you know, to, you, there's lots to choose from. Right. But that's, a, that's a real popular <coughs> to add to LinkedIn because it's professional. Sounds good. Yeah, so that was really good. Um, okay, so did you see that video of the guy doing the test, Siri versus Google search? No, I haven't seen that one. Okay, it was actually pretty funny because... Um, they were testing, they put two phones, the iPhone, and I just saw Dawn in the chat room says she just got, she's the owner of a new um, Nexus, it doesn't say Nexus, a Galaxy Nexus, so I'm curious Dawn, because I'm still um, having problems with my Galaxy Nexus, but... Um, yeah, in fact, every time... I know. Now, I do have the head of somebody at Samsung. It's funny because their email comes and it says from president. And I just laugh going, president of what? The call center in some other place. But um, anyway, they're trying to fix my problem still six months later. But anyway, um, Google, they did a search. They put the an Android phone and the um, iPhone 4S that has Siri, and they put them down side by side. Now the catch is the Android phone was one of the new devices that has the new operating system called Jelly Bean. So most of us, if we have a fairly new Android system that's updated, it has Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, all of, if you're not aware, most people don't know this, but all of Android's, all of Google's um, operating systems are all desserts. Gingerbread, frozen yogurt, Ice Cream Sandwich. And the newest one is called Jelly Bean. So Jelly Bean has to be installed because it's faster. So they, they did this test where they pushed both mic, the little mic button at the same time, and they asked a question. And they asked a series of 800 questions to test which one would get the most correct and which one would be faster. Well, of course, the, the Android phone was faster, um, but Siri had smarter um, sounding answers. Mm. So the video clip was pretty funny because it... Um, it showed, and you could just do a search, Siri versus Google, uh, you know. On, on and Siri technically is still in beta. I, well. Technically. I don't think they It's kind of like Google that they're always in beta. Yeah, 
they should never take it out of date. That's <laughs> probably true. It's got you got to keep making. I mean, these type of things you've got to always keep tweaking. But yeah, I thought that was pretty funny, and it was a funny video of just how um, you know the answers that you get from both of them. And um, but it was it was pretty interesting. So uh, that made me interested in the whole Jelly Bean operating system. Going maybe that would solve my problems after six months. Mm. You know what? Ice cream sandwich is supposed to solve all the problems. So. And that's what they said. They go, when this upgrade comes to ice cream sandwich, it's going to solve all your problems. And yeah, it hasn't happened. No. But I don't even know that Google uh, or that um, the Nexus, Samsung, will not be able to, Did you hear the, the ruling yesterday? The court, Apple was suing Samsung right. because of the whole Galaxy Nexus being yep. too close to their iPhone. Right. Even though they both, I think, make parts for each other. So it's sort of interesting really weird but apple won as of yesterday mm -hmm. um, and they're saying they they had like 10 million orders pre-orders for the the new galaxy and this may be the tablet though um but they may not be able to sell any of them in the united states hmm. interesting so leva and jeff will have to be smugglers for us from other countries <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll come available there, but just um, go with the iPhone. Don't don't even waste your time. <laughs> and that's her saying. It goes, just give in and get an iPhone. But I feel like I don't. I feel like I need to have. And, and you know what? It's like my wife. All she says is, "I got Android because they support Flash." Not for long. Oh, really? Adobe doesn't care anymore. They said four one is the last version of, or whatever it was, is the last version of Flash that they're developing. Period. Um, even on the desktop. Flash, I don't know. It's going to be a niche market. I don't think it's going to be very big anymore. Um, wow. A lot of vendors don't support it anymore. Even Camtasia, uh, TechSmith, in the new version on Studio 8, no longer supports Flash at all. So no. if your website has all this <coughs> fancy Flash intro... You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You need to redo yeah. your website. Time to, time to learn Adobe Edge, which generates HTML5 and does a really nice job just like Flash does. That's or something else because Flash time is just going away. To do your website. The which one? It's time to hire someone. That's to do right. Your website. Yeah, I still see a lot of websites that you you open them up and there's just all this pretty Flash. Not anymore. And you go first of all, that's not searchable. So you're. <clears throat> you're that's always been the problem with Flash, and it's funny how how many people would do the Flash websites and then nobody could search them. And they couldn't yeah, tag they them. Well. And, searches. Yeah. So yeah. that was, yeah. you know, Flash had its web heyday back in the 90s. And it really hasn't been that big on the web since as far as websites. The people use little bits and pieces of Flash. Right. But other than that, if you notice now, very few sites have Flash anymore, if any. That's interesting. If any Flash. So yeah. it's... Uh, well, now, now all these <laughs> iPads out there can't see any of them. Um, so do you have any fun? I, I have all these fun toys that um, Verizon sent me. I'm still trying to figure them out. This one is called the, the Sony Smartwatch. Um, and it's obviously smarter than I am because I I still haven't been able to figure out. It syncs with your Android phone. And it's um, I, obviously I haven't set it up. It's still set at zero. But it, um, it can, you touch the screen and you can read your messages that come in. You touch another part of it and it um, has music. It has obviously a watch. It has a stopwatch. It has a calendar it has facebook i'm like first of all how would you read your facebook i, I can't even read my facebook updates on a phone right let alone on this <laughs> tiny watch but it's a cool looking watch but, but watch. you know what's interesting the millennials don't like watches yeah i know so there's but a good chance the they'll never wear that because they have their phone see well here's the here's the benefit they're saying to to these smart watches um you can leave your phone you do have to have it you can leave your phone in your pocket or your purse or your backpack or wherever, and your watch now is your screen. Now, so, now remember, folks, this is in. the first step to having a brain implant so you can have Facebook you know, on your brain. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that to me. They said, I, all this wearable technology kind of freaks me out. I said, it excites me because I won't lose stuff anymore. If we just could put them somewhere on our body, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't leave my phone places. Um you know, and I, I do think we're moving away from, um, you know, the technology where we access it um, through keyboards. You know, now we've got touch screens. But I think we're moving into the wearable technology with Google Glass and all of the things that have been launched recently. And it'll go into the stage of wearable technology. I mean, look at all the clothes that are now made with, um, you know, they're made for 
keeping our devices on our bodies so that we don't lose them. My favorite is still my LG, um, that little headset. It, you know, I think I've showed it a couple times. I wear it, you wear it around your neck, and when you get a call, my phone, I can just leave my phone sitting in the house, and I can just pop in the earbud and take a call, hmm. listen to music. It's a I'm Bluetooth? Or it's Bluetooth. I love that. I, I really am in, I'm finding that I thought I would use it just for working out. Because there's no cord attached to my phone for But you still, you still have to have it within about, what, 30 feet of you? You have to have your phone nearby. So nearby. like when I'm okay. working out or something, I can have it in my pocket or in my bag, my workout bag. But before, I had to have a cord attached to my phone to listen to music while I'm working out or if a call came in or something when I'm on a walk. But now I can just leave my phone in my pocket, go for a walk, and wear my little thing. But what I use it for mostly is around the house. Um, it's hands-free bluetooth right there around my neck so i i like that one the watch i'll check i'll get it working today and i'll test it and see um they also sent me this cool crayon um I, they sent me a lot of things for little kids so i don't know if they think i behave like a child or that I have <laughs> i'm not sure they sent me this zombie game that and i hate zombie stuff i just find zombie and i know that i'll get a lot of a flack from this because i know there's a lot of zombie lovers out there but um, you download a game on your iPad, and then it has little, like, almost chess pieces, the little plastic guys, but the when they touch the screen, they interact. So, you know, I'll, I'll have my grandchildren play with those. But um, And then the crayon, you color, and you download the app, and you can color, but I can't get this to work yet either. It is that, lights is up. that an electronic crayon? Yeah, and you just, um, you write on your iPad. Hmm. So, in, in yeah, so I'm not sure. All right, so Verizon is sending me all kinds of fun gadgets. So, um, so what's Verizon doing with those? That's stuff that they're selling or planning on selling, or selling them currently in their stores. But they're looking at rolling out a bigger um, product offering, like going into because if you think about it, all of these products require internet connection. Right, right. So they're trying to really look at the strategy of. You know. Well, you know what? The only way they're going to make that work is they stop the stupid one, two megabyte or gigabyte bandwidth require, you know, limitations and start giving people unlimited bandwidth. That, that new plan they rolled out, the shared um, shared data plan. But for families like ours, it saved it. Immediately, I was excited. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's the answer. But we have four of us using smartphones. Right. If you just have one or two people in your family, it doesn't make sense. But when you have four data hogs, um, it totally makes sense, to, and it saves money because we would go over data. We would get these warning messages. You're yeah, we go over, over all data. the time. Yeah, and then we'd have to bribe each other. You know, can I watch this on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> can I buy minutes from you? Can well, you I know, buy we're, we're, on Verizon, we're on Verizon, and I think we only get two gigabytes. Yeah, that's, you, that's you, not that's nothing. I mean, that's really not that much. Um, I made a big mistake one time. We were in Hawaii, and we had we got one of those MiFi's. And when we got the MiFi, I went, cool, this is great. We were getting 30 megabits down on a MiFi. And, and for those who don't know, a MiFi is a wireless device that lets you connect to the Internet wherever you are. You don't need a phone. Uh, and it also allows you to tether, I think, five or ten devices on it. I think it's five. Um, so we're in Hawaii, and I decide, hey, I'm going to go into iTunes and download Zinio magazines. Oh, I downloaded dude. 20 of them. <laughs> I, hadn't down I, I hadn't kept my subscriptions up, so I downloaded a whole mess of them, and our limit was five gigabytes on on the MiFi. I was at seven within two days. Yeah, and I went. You downloaded oh, everything geez. there. Yeah, so we wound up spending an extra, I think, twenty bucks. Which for... here's the thing about, and I, this is what when I went out to Verizon, they flew us out to their innovation center, and we had these brainstorming sessions. And I said, here's my thing about this. I yes, you are you're creating data hogs because we can, we keep wanting more. We have this insatiable appetite for technology. So yeah, granted, we are my family is their perfect client because we spend over three hundred dollars a month on cell phones. It's crazy. That's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but there's four of us, four smartphones, all with data. Um, I tether much to my iPad using my phone so I, I same thing I can tether five devices um, but we're getting smarter like when we go to download things like you were saying downloaded magazines don't download them from your phone's uh, cell service 
service and Wi-Fi, or um, not Wi-Fi, but go into the lobby of the hotel or go into somewhere where you're just Right, where you get Wi-Fi, right? Use the Wi-Fi. And I had to really make sure my kids were educated in this, is the difference between using somebody's home Wi-Fi and your phone. When you're downloading a video um, using your phone, you're going to eat up your data. Go on their house Wi-Fi, it's free. Well, of course, the only, because the only problem with that is a lot of the hotels give you no bandwidth. I know. Yeah. So you but, can't download so anything. I said to, to Verizon, I said, I think the key is education. We just don't know this. I mean, we need to know the difference between why do we go and use the Wi-Fi in your house when you're able to, you know, because we think it's a phone. I can do it right here. I don't need to switch to Wi-Fi. Sometimes it'll give you that message. You might want to turn on your Wi-Fi. Um, you're going, why? I have, I have a strong signal. Well, you're going to save bandwidth. You know? So it's, it's really a matter of educating consumers. And I think it's a, a really a strong thing that we need to educate parents so parents can educate their kids because kids are growing up as data hogs. And we're, you know, we're a data obese society that we can't get <laughs> enough data. I mean, we're just watching, consuming videos and you know, doing things on our phones that the cell phone companies are loving it. Because they just keep, you know, charging the data. So we need to be smarter consumers, and we need to educate our kids on the difference and the costs, things like that. But sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. But <clears throat> that's kind of one of the things I, I look at. All these gadgets, and I go, "Wow, I love gadgets. I love this. If they make my life easier." So well, far, there's another thing that's hurting uh, consumption, and that's the fact that people are not compressing the videos like they, everybody wants high quality videos. Right. So you're now downloading something that's really not all that compressed, so it's right. really eating up the bandwidth. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's even that education, we don't we don't understand. Yeah. You know, the average consumer doesn't understand that, and so we need to get s smarter. And again, I think parents really have to take an active role in teaching their kids about this because. And they will once they get off downloading their movies. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And I look at it and go, our kids are going to move out on their own. And their cell bills are going to be out of the you know astronomical because they've never learned. How yes, to but the nice part there is it's not your problem anymore. <laughs> it will be when they call going. Can I move back home because <laughs> you know our kids are drinking Starbucks coffee every day and consuming you know three megabytes of data a month. <laughs> they're going to move out on their own. They're broke just oh, over caffeinated and, and over connected. It's like you better go stay at Starbucks and use their Wi-Fi <clears> if you're going to drink coffee. Yeah, but remember they're over caffeinated and over connected and underslept. <laughs> That's true. Um, oh, I got a new skin. New skin it. Which is my social media tip um, this week because I had issues with skin it and with Samsung. Because skin it, I ordered a skin for my iPad and uh, and this one says, always wear your invisible crown. <laughs> it has a little Twitter bird on it. But anyway, I ordered it. It came and it was the wrong size. It, it didn't have the holes cut where it should have been. Now, mm. I'd have been my mistake. I may have chosen iPad One instead of a like new iPad. You know, now it's so confusing when you go to these. But I thought I chose the correct one. So I go to the order form. There's no phone number on it, um, but there's a Twitter and a Facebook logo where it says contacts. So I thought, oh, they must be trying to really be forward thinking and get people to go to connect on the social sites. So I go to the Twitter account. They do have a Twitter account at Skinit. Um, I wrote a little thing saying, got the wrong thing. How do I go about replacing this? And this is, I've had many um, skins for my devices through Skinit. Always had great service. But I sent this tweet out. Two weeks go by. Never hear anything. And I thought, okay, that's weird. I need to figure this out. So I went to, about a week after, I went to their website. And there's a form, a long form you have to fill out with all this crazy stuff that you have to put in there. It's like, okay, you have my order in your computer. And you should have all my info. Anyway, I fill out this order form for them to just contact me. A week goes by. So now two weeks I haven't heard from anybody on Twitter. A week and I haven't heard back from anybody on the email. They finally send me a thing that basically says um, I have to provide them all the detail, more detailed information before they'll send me the code to reorder this thing. Still no one replied on Twitter. So I wrote to them and I said, first of all, I would remove your Twitter account from all marketing material. When you put your Twitter account and your Twitter link on your, as a customer service contact and nobody gets back to you in two weeks, that's hideous service. Um, and I, that it, just Maybe the one person went on vacation. 
that could be. And I thought, you know, it could be that they used to man that account, and now they don't. Mm -hmm. Unless so, it's just a one-person company. But it was Sam, no, because um, Skinnit was pretty, it, it actually, ironically, was started by a friend of mine, Tom oh, okay. Stimmett, and then he sold it to 3M. Mm. And now there's a group that runs this, but they moved to California from Colorado. So oh, now, that, that completely messes them up. And it's somehow, now I think they've outsourced their customer service. That must be the only company that moved to California in the last four years because they're all leaving. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. Hmm. A division that was already established there or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, Samsung, same thing. I, I reached out through Samsung Help to get my phone issue uh, fixed. And they replied pretty quickly saying, we will escalate this. Three months go by. I was like, where did it get escalated to? The trash? You know, so my big complaint and, and my warning to companies, and regardless of the size, if you're going to create these social media accounts, people will assume you're manning them. And if somebody writes to you on your social accounts at least once a day, check them. Yeah. I think for the most part, people have been pretty good about that. Um, I, I just read something that says it's so sad how low the number is of complaints that get answered on social media. Really? Okay. Yeah, Interesting. Really low number. Um, I just think people are using automated tools like Hootsuite, TweetDeck, and those things mm. to put out information every day, but they're not listening to the questions and comments. And if you're a big brand and there's hundreds of comments coming in every day, it's probably they're not sifting. I don't know. Right said it's a very low number of people that get replies back from companies. And I just, it's surprising to me. Um, you know, so it's like, you've got to make sure we're using. Um, now, that, now, next week, we, we have to wrap it up. We're almost 45 minutes. No. Next, next week, we have a guest. Actually, yes, we have we guests do. the next three weeks, I think. We have some power guests. We have six or seven guests lined up. Um, yeah, from um, Midori Connolly next week, who is going to talk about... Um, tools that we can use at conferences if mm -hmm. you present, um, how to do things um, using your iPad or other tools wirelessly. So I'm really excited about having her on. We have uh, so many fun guests coming up about in our business. So See, we just lost you. We're losing your audio. Yeah. We just lost your audio. Serious? No, you're back again, but you cut out. You were saying something about Midori, and then you kind of faded in and out. I said we have uh, lots of guests coming up to talk about technology in our business. I think you shut me off because I ran over time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never um, do that. Everyone have a happy 4th if you're here in the United States. I guess happy 4th everywhere. Everyone has a 4th. Everybody have a 4th. Well, actually, you already had a 4th in Australia. So True. Have, a, have a nice 5th. Anyway, everybody, have a great one, and we will see you next week. Is Midori on next week? Next week. Sounds great. It should be fun. She's in San Diego, I think, right? Yeah. Somewhere in California. Sounds great. Anyway, everybody, have a great 4th of July weekend if you're in the States, and if you're elsewhere, just have a great day. Have a great week. Yeah. Take care, everyone. We will see you next week on Shrek Tech. Bye, everyone. I thought Jeff said he's just starting the fourth.